Hi, right, how you doing all? This is, um, I just wanted to do a quick video on the new Photoshop sky replacement tool. I rarely ever use Photoshop. I'm a pretty much Lightroom man all the time. I may pop into to Photoshop to use the content aware to remove something, or I may use it to, if I'm taking a picture of a, say, a scene on a river and there's a, liver, uh, there's a leaf in the foreground and I want to make the leaf just a, a little bit more prominent, a little bit bigger, I'll use Photoshop to upsize the leaf a little bit, just a little bit of cheating. Um, but other that i'm strictly pretty much lightroom all the way um local adjustments brush adjustments and that kind of thing now uh, photoshop 2022 is out there's this i'm probably late to the party but there's a new tool on it called sky replacement so i just thought i quick if you haven't seen it this is how easy it is to use this is a shot i took down stoke gabriel nothing nothing special i was just out with a with a wife and little four-legged one going for a walk and i grabbed this shot i just quite liked the sky and i don't know there's not really a shot there really but it was just a grab shot so i just want to show how cool this software is and how easy it is to use so pretty much you come up to edit go down to sky replacement click on that and um, as you can see in the top right here the sky that was last used from where I was playing around last time is, is the one that will quickly be pushed in. I mean, look at that. What's that taking, 16 seconds? And if you don't like that, you go up to your sky, click on it again, go down, have a look for another sky, something a bit different. Um, let's go for that. Click on that one. Look at that. I mean, I know obviously it doesn't match the foregrounds, but then what you can do is you can change the temperature a little bit, warm it up cool it down you know brightness you can definitely have a little play about to get it to match your foreground if you want to or you can save this image and you can go back into Lightroom or continue in Photoshop if you like and change your foreground temperature or color so it matches the sky so yeah I just wanted to show you how quick and easy that is I don't know if it's something I use but it's definitely a cool the technology is just getting unbelievable now it's just it's crazy good I mean let's get something that's completely far out you're going to see a lot of pictures on Instagram looking completely two-parted now. But it's weird, the human eye, look, I've just put that in. My, my human eye now, I even see the bottom half of the picture as being warmer. I don't know why. Um, again, if you want to cool it down, cool it down if you want to warm it up, warm it up. But let's just see how well, because that's a contrasting sky compared to the foreground. It's okay, that one. And let's zoom in and see how well it is done. I mean, that hasn't done. This is hand out shot, so it's not very sharp. And I was, like I said, I was just walking about. But that's done pretty well around the edges of the trees, isn't it? Look at that. It's not bad at all. Hmm, fit screen. Anyway, um, let's bin that off. Uh, don't save. Oh, what am I doing? No. Photoshop. Let's grab another one. Uh, let's have a look at this. This is a shot. I drive past this scene every day on my way home from work. It's a little scene on top there. It's quite autumnal. I just quite like the way the shadow was coming off this tree. I'm definitely going to go back at probably sundown or something like that. But anyway, let's try this scene. Uh, again, go up to edit. Come down to sky replacement. And it, again, it's using the last sky that was available. Three, two, one. Come on. God, my laptop's getting... There you go. Look at that. Boom. But look how well that has filled the sky in and around the tree. How crazy good is that? Oh, I'm well impressed. Like I said, I don't know if I use it, but it's just a cool... Yeah, I think that's well impressive. Well impressive. But anyway, if, and if there's no sky in this library that you like... Obviously, we've all got a hard drive full of pictures. You can go down to add, da, 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 and you can go and get your own sky from another picture. Let's just see if I've got another picture with a sky in it that I could use. Um, <laughs> I haven't. I was hoping I might have had a, um, another sky to put in. Let's try that. Let's just see what that does. So I've just dragged this picture in. There's a little bit of sky there, look. Let's click on that bad boy and see what that does. <laughs> How cool is that, look? That little bit of sky in there. It's just taken and filled in all around the gaps, look. Oh, 
And look at that, that's done pretty well on the horizon, isn't it? And then pretty much you just hit the cross, save it, do whatever you do, tickety-boo. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to show how easy that was to use. So it's pretty much edit, sky replacement, and then have a play about. If there's no skies in there you like, you just drag your own ones in from your own pictures. Obviously, you need to watch it if you're shooting. If you've got one scene, say, that you've shot at 18mm, and another scene you've shot with a focal length of, say, 55mm, 100mm, the perspective, I think, of the lens, because the difference, perspective differences of the lens may look different when you put, say, 100 mil a sky shot at 100 mil on top of a, a landscape that was shot at say 16 17 mil i'm guessing i don't know i haven't tried yet i've literally only just opened this because my computer just updated it so um yeah i just thought i'd show you how cool and easy that is um any comments or anything about that any ways that you can make it better or any ideas or whether you think you should cut your sky out before you build your own library of skies um i think that's pretty cool so cheers for watching see you in the next vid not that I'm going to do many on editing ones because I'm not the world's best editor at all. Cool. Cheers. Bye.